If you want to have a simple to learn opening that can give you a win as early as move 8 and you can also surprise your opponent by playing it, then welcome into this video. I'm going to show you one underrated opening line that will help you crush a lot of experienced opponents and get them totally out of their opening preparation. I'm Grandmaster Igor Smirnov and let's rock! Now before that, I hope that you've had a great New Year's celebration. I certainly did. I think I've been outside too much as now I'm speaking in a hoarse voice. Hopefully my professional mic can fix that and you don't notice that. Um, anyway, wishing you all the best. Paul Morphy, one of the legendary players of the past, said take care of your pieces so that they can take care of you. And I can basically give you the same uh, New Year greeting. Take care of your most valuable piece, which is yourself, so that you can take care of yourself and your loved ones. And also the final announcement before we jump to the opening that I'm about to share with you. Uh, it's Monday today, I just realized that even though our special offers in honor of Christmas and New Year finished, but our website administrator did not work on Sunday and did not update on the website. And some people could still take advantage of our 60% discount on all courses and packages. So I noticed only today and Monday, and to make it fair for everybody, I decided to prolong the offers for one more day till Tuesday inclusive. Therefore, if you missed out on that, now you have this final chance, one final day to get any of our premium courses with a massive discount and sometimes some additional bonuses and set yourself up for the chess success in 2022. And with that being said, let's jump right to the chessboard. So you're starting up with the move queen pawn move forward to d4. And by the way, if you don't play d4, if let's say you play e4 instead normally on the first move, don't worry, it's a really, really simple and universal setup and you can play right after watching this video. So this video is enough for you. And yeah, just because it's so simple and it's universal, whatever black does, you're gonna play the same thing. Now, black will play knight of six or whatever. You go knight of three, e6, and then e3. So here it's the beginning of the setup called call a system. And a lot of players kind of underestimate this system because, yeah, no, I think none of the really world's top players played. It looks maybe slightly passive, but in reality, if you think about it, it's the slab defense in with the reverse color and with an extra tempo. And the slab defense is a very good opening for black. A lot of the top players played. So why is it that, you know, it's bad for white? It doesn't. With an extra tempo, it should be great. And there are some hidden attacking opportunities that almost no one is aware of that I'm going to share with you today. So you're putting here your bishop and your knight this way. And by the way, pay attention to the white setup by now. These are the first moves. Exactly putting your bishop here, put your knights and then castling. This is exactly what you're going to be doing at every occasion. Whatever black does, you're just putting this setup. So it's very simple, very simple to learn. You don't need to know any opening theory. You don't have to calculate anything. You can play these moves really, really quickly and it's good. And also, thanks to these central pawns in the center, your position is rock solid. There's really nothing black can do here to attack you anywhere soon. Okay, black castles. And then you play another interesting move, rook e1. Looks a bit mysterious, but it makes sense. If you think about the white setup, white really needs to bring out this bishop from c1. And how do you do that? Well, one of the best ways to do this is to strike in the center with a pawn to e4, which will give you some attacking options here in the center, but simultaneously will open up this diagonal for the bishop. And that's why we have this rook in place, so that it will support this advancement of your pawn forward on the next move. And it also sets a really, really evil trap, because I mean, this is just inhuman to notice it, honestly. Because here, what black will do is considering development of their queenside bishop. And putting it here is a bit passive, so they'll probably play pawn b6. And it's hard to believe that this position is practically losing for black. Sockfish gives it 1.5 advantage for white, which is already a significant advantage. But in reality, you're going to crush everybody because nobody can defend as good as Stockfish, right? And again, it's just move 8. So think about this, how amazing it is. And it's one of the main positions of this opening and it's already completely winning. Here's the thing, you're starting this very, very hidden attack with the move pawn to e4. And strangely enough, black cannot withstand it. All right, now, first of all, your initial intent is just to push the pawn forward to e5. And from here, it'll double attack black's bishop and knight. So that's something black should be concerned about. And okay, they'll probably take here your recapture with a knight. Also putting, once again, pressure both to the bishop and the knight. Therefore, black will take as well. 
We'll take a look at this variation in a moment, but just in case, just so that you're fully covered, what if they don't take? What if they play anything else? Let's say bishop b7. They're just fiancadoing their bishop. There is another interesting thing that they're gonna, going to fall for. It's knight takes f6, queen takes, and bishop g5. All of a sudden, this queen on f6 is trapped. You can see that the white's bishops are doing a great job controlling here all the squares where this queen could possibly go to. And therefore, yeah, the queen is gone, and you're winning the game. And going back a few moves, we can see that black cannot really ignore your threat of taking this knight, even though taking the bishop is also good for white, but taking the knight is even stronger, and therefore most of your balls will take it. And naturally, most people, when they have an opportunity to exchange in a position like that, they just do it automatically. Then you take it with a bishop, and now you're attacking this knight here on c6, so they protect it somehow, let's say bishop b7, and now bishop takes h7. So that's the whole trick. You've got this uh, typical tactical pattern, the sacrifice of the bishop to h7, but in this position it comes very unexpectedly for black because it seemed like both players just played normal development moves, were, you know, fighting for the center, etc., all the standard stuff, but all of a sudden counts this bishop takes h7, which destroys the castling position, brings the king out, and then you're forcing the checkmate, basically. King takes, knight g5 check. By the way, it's a very common combination, so it's worthwhile to pay attention and to remember it, because it can work in other openings as well. And now, normally they'll go backwards, which is losing, we're gonna take a look at that, but just in case, again, so that you know how to finish them off, in case they're brave enough to move their king forward, certainly moving their king forward should not help, because the king is just way too exposed here, you can attack it with plenty of your pieces, and if it goes to h6, the knight takes f7 is a very strong move, check to the king, attack of the queen, and notice that the king is also under the check from the bishop. So that is also a discover check. And on the next move, so the king will have to go, and you can at least grab the queen here, and win the game that way. So that is clearly winning for white. Let's take a move back here. If they go to g6 instead, the good way to continue your attack here is playing pawn h4. Now you have plenty of threats. It's pawn h5, attacking the queen, maybe queen d3 check, in some lines, maybe queen g4 also to oppose it against enemy's king. And you can just see that this king is stuck here in front of the rest of the, their army. You can attack it from any direction you want, and you're going to checkmate it soon. Therefore, that's not going to help. And if they go king g8, trying to you know hide their back on its original square, then queen h5 comes here, and queen h7 is a very annoying checkmating threat that they actually cannot stop. Because if they go rook e8, trying to give this escape path to the king, there follows this forcing line, queen takes first of all this pawn, then you come back, queen h7, and you just basically chase the king to death, and it is a checkmate. And now let me show you another attacking pattern, which is also very unexpected by your opponent, and that you can use in different positions, but especially in this color system. So we're going here after knight of 3, pawn e3, we're putting the same setup in place, pawn c3, and goes d2, and then you castle. You may notice that in this case black put their knight to d7, not to c6. That's also something they do fairly often, as the knight looks good on d7 as well. And let's take a look at what you can do here. But it's actually not that critical, I'm just wanting to show you a slightly different variation of the same opening and what you can do there. So they castle, you play rook to e1, and let's say previously we analyzed that they were trying to develop this bishop by playing b6. And then you could strike in the center with e4 and take an advantage of this open diagonal that is temporarily weak. Now, what if they don't play b6? Let's say they go queen c7, another standard move in all kinds of queen's pawn opening. Then, you still go pawn e4, still the same stuff, still threatens pawn e5. So, so far, the moves are all the same. Pawn takes, knight takes, attacking here, putting pressure, and after they take, here is another interesting attacking pattern. You can lift the rook here to e4, and later swing it over here to the king side, and all of a sudden you're having a crushing attack, because all of your pieces are targeting the king, and uh, black is defenseless, basically. It's, it's really, really cool, because, again, nothing really showed your intent of attack on the king side, but that's exactly what you're going after. Let's say they go knight f6 attacking your rook, or whatever. You go rook h4, now just look at this. Almost all of your pieces are pointing towards the king, right? These two powerful bishops, the knight is easily um, in, in close proximity, is ready to jump somewhere here or here, and I'll show you how you can involve the queen also very, very soon. So let's say they do something, they take here on d4, you can even ignore that, because your attack is so strong, because you can go ahead and play bishop g5 right away. Because normally, your rook and bishop are attacking this pawn, so you just need to get rid of this knight by taking it. And then this pawn will be gone. 
And there is nothing Black can do really about that, because again, if, if Knight goes away, you, then you take the pawn right away, right? If they go h6, then okay, you just take it right here, pawn takes, and here there is another also very typical idea that it's worth remembering. Although you could take here and it's a good move, there is even a stronger move, it's queen d2. That's how you bring the queen into the attack. You get it involved by playing queen d2, and then it takes on h6, and then simply queen h8 checkmate. And black is defenseless. And that's really also beautiful how your queen all of a sudden could get involved and checkmate black just within a few moves. Very useful maneuver. Okay, let's go back a few moves and try to see if there was anything else that black can possibly play here. All right, let's say... Let's say here, we already know that black should be concerned about bishop coming to g5, so what if they go h6 trying to stop this? Well, that doesn't change much for black, as now you can sacrifice the bishop on h6, and after pawn takes, it's the same thing, queen d2. Now we're lifting the queen, and after that, queen takes h6, queen h8, checkmate, all the same stuff, very simple, straightforward, and very effective as well, because there is nothing black can do here, once again. Time for black to pack bags and go home. All right, let's see if there is anything else that black could do instead of h6. What if they go pawn g6? Well, in this case, black has so many weaknesses here that it's certainly easy for you to attack in multiple different ways. You can bring your bishop either to g5 or to h6, both ways are great, or you can still use the same queen lift. You can transfer the queen to the king side, because queen is the most powerful attacking force, and it makes sense to bring it closer to the opponent's king. And after that, you're going to go queen h6. Even though it doesn't checkmate black immediately, it's going to happen soon anyway. So let's say black do something, trade on d4, okay, you can take. The problem for black is that it's really hard to oppose anything. You have a very clear attacking plan, and it's totally unclear what black should do here. Let's say they develop their bishop, or prepare the development. You go queen h6, and now bishop g5 is once again a threat, because you just want to eliminate this knight, and after that... No, not, not knight h5, and after that queen takes h7 would be checkmate, right? So bishop g5 is a threat, and basically if they just carelessly play bishop b7, you go bishop g5, you eliminate this knight, and then queen takes h7 checkmate. That's it, end of story. And yeah, I think that that's basically it, but also let me ask you one quick thing. What if black here plays the move rook to d8? Can you play bishop g5 here? or not? That's an interesting question. Think about this and write it down in the comments below if you can find uh, some trick for black here. After a bishop coming here to g5, what will black do? Is it a good move for white or not? Can black somehow save their position? Write it down in the comments below if you can find it. And if you have any questions about this opening overall, then feel free to let me know. And once again, wishing you all the best for 2022. Don't forget about the final day of our special offer, so if you wanted to elevate your chess, you can do so right now by grabbing any of our premium courses at 60% off for the very final day only. Take care, all the best.